What's up everyone, Jason Brown here, the King of Programming. Today we are doing another program review of a program that you guys requested. This is Hard Work Pays Off for Matt Fraser. We're gonna start right now. All right, so I start these videos all off the same way, talking about context, what I'm looking at, give you guys some frame of reference as what it is I use to really assess whether or not a program is an approved program or a rejected program. So with that said, we're thinking about fundamentals of program design. Exercise order, exercise selection, sets, reps, and rest intervals, conditioning. With a program like this, you better be waiting for there to be some conditioning because CrossFit clearly is about conditioning and doing a lot of different tasks. We're going to get more into the nuances of that, but so you guys are understanding as to what I'm looking at, those are things that I'm looking at. Now, when I look at something as simple as sets, reps, and rest intervals, oftentimes what we see is that there's either a mismatch of sets, reps, and rest intervals, or maybe there is just a, an issue in terms of um, what is being asked of someone to do. For instance, if you ask someone to do a ton of volume of a big movement like a chin-up, a lot of times people can't really adhere to those rep schemes because they are A, too high based on what that movement pattern is and how much musculature we're working with a pattern like a chin-up, and B, maybe there's not a rest, enough rest between sets to recover and do what is being asked. But when I break this stuff down and I look at these things, these are things I'm thinking about. And you might be thinking, well, if someone's super advanced, won't they need more volume? May be the case, but oftentimes it's not the case. Oftentimes what we see is that we need to have things in place that match better with what is being asked. But something like a chin up, we don't need to go particularly high to get a big bang for the buck from that. We can be in the 25 to 30 rep range and get a big bang for the buck. Now, if someone is more advanced, of course, they can load the chin up. If we're doing four sets of six and body weight is easy for you, then add a weighted vest, add a dip belt where you're adding some weight to that movement. So we can certainly use those parameters as the guiding light as to what we should be doing to make it hard. But if we're prescribing things like reps and reserve, people should know, okay, well, four sets of six is very easy for me. I can just crank those out on the chin up ninja, add a weighted vest, add a dip belt, or add some additional uh, uh, resistance in terms of like adding a dumbbell between your feet. So a lot of ways to skin the cap with that stuff. So we don't necessarily need to crank the volume up super high to get a big bang through the buck. So that's, again, kind of just give you guys some context. Now, when I think about a CrossFit program, there is going to be conditioning. Well, I, I don't know any CrossFit programs that wouldn't have conditioning because conditioning is a mainstay for what a CrossFit athlete is doing. They are doing loads with conditioning parameters in place. So they might be doing some Olympic lifting in a conditioning setting, which I know to a lot of people, that is kind of a foreign thing. I know for me, before I got involved with CrossFit a long time ago, I was like Olympic lifting for high reps, you gotta be kidding me. But people are doing it. And of course, there are many things to consider with high rep Olympic lifting, which we will potentially talk about on another day. But for today, let's look at this program and let's see what we have here and see what we have to work with in terms of whether or not it is a good program or a bad program. So first and foremost, Matt Fraser is someone that you guys know who he is. I don't need to give you background on him, but I will tell you as a coach, I have seen things he said over the years and I thought to myself, he is a great athlete, but he doesn't know much about programming. And I don't know if that's the case here. I haven't looked at this program at all yet. I signed up for a free, free 14 day trial and now I'm gonna look at it. Um, but I will tell you, I've heard him say things about programming that are not true and clearly shows to me that there is some inexperience there in terms of program design and understanding how to program things. And then if you get into actual physiology, then there, that's a whole other you know bag of tricks that someone may or may not have. Now, does someone need to have an exercise science degree to write great programs? Definitely not. But having some basic elements of things like functional anatomy, bioenergetics, um, certainly the fundamentals of programming that we've talked about, those are things that do make up a great program and just give someone more tools in the toolbox to understand what goes into that program. So let's take a peek at what's here. Um, so I signed up for the flagship trial of this program and this app, I will say, off just first glance is a really cool app. And um, these people that run this app actually reached out to me to get some of my training in their app and now after seeing it, I will say this is a very, very slick app. app. I really like it. Um, I like how clear it is. I like the way it looks. It looks phenomenal. So um, obviously someone like Matt Fraser that's got potentially thousands upon thousands of people using this, he wants to have a legitimate app. I mean, it makes complete sense. Um, what I will say is that what I don't like off the bat is that you are choosing a start date and then the week starts from there. So 
I guess there could be some advantages to that, someone that doesn't want to wait, but trying to fit in, let's say if we were starting on a Thursday, which today is a Thursday, so I'm starting technically on a Thursday, there could be some disadvantages of starting a week at that late in the week, if that makes any sense at all, all right? But anyways, um, let's just get into it and see what's here. So day one, so strength, we've got back squat. <sighs> one set of 10, one set of eight, one set of six, one set of four. Uh, I don't know what that means. Uh, personal record, notes. Okay, it doesn't tell me anything other than we're doing back squats. It doesn't say how long to rest. It doesn't say what we're shooting for in terms of RPE, RIR, things like that, not there. And then we're going into front squat with one by five across uh, another four sets. So we've got back squat, front squat, no rest intervals, no guidelines. I don't even know what you're asking me to do today. Okay, so that's already kind of not starting off on a good foot. Part two, cardio. We have rowing intervals where we're resting one minute, 30 seconds, uh, doing a 1500 meter row and then resting a minute and then a 250 resting 30, a 250 resting two, so on and so forth. Hopefully you guys can see this on the screen. No guidelines here, no notes, sorry. So we can add notes, but it doesn't tell me what I'm doing. Um, at your personal record below 500 meter. A little bit confusing. At least there's some rest intervals here. I will give them that. but. Let's consider what we're doing here, what we're asking people to he here to do in this session. We're asking them to potentially squat heavy, which we don't know if that's what it is. It could be just technique work with the squat for all we know. Um, we can't assume anything, but we're asking someone to squat, back squat and front squat, potentially heavy, and then do cardio, a variety of rowing intervals with different rest intervals and different uh, time domains as far as um, how long we're gonna be rowing for. And that's part two of our day. And then we're going into bench press with a similar scheme that we did for back squat, but it's one set of 10, one set of 10, and then three sets of 10. Again, no guidelines, no rest intervals. I don't know what you're asking me to do. Um, and then from there, we've got some accessory work. Plate, pinch, bent, bench press. We gotta click on the demo video for that. It's an absolute ridiculous variation, to be honest. I don't even know why anyone would do that. Um, I'm trying to understand this, guys. Why would someone do a plate, pinch, bent press? You have limited range of motion. You're limited by how much weight you can push. There's obviously a grip component. I, I don't know, maybe he knows something I don't know, but that, that just seems like a ridiculous variation to me. Four sets of 15 with that, and then I don't know if this is a superset or not, but it is dumbbell bicep curl, four sets of 15, 15, so 15 each. And then your accessory work is intended to be tough, part of training still. And then we're doing three rounds of some core work. No rest intervals, no guidelines. I don't know what I should do for loading. Why four sets? Can we do it with three sets? Possibly. Just kind of a hodgepodge of training. In this day, if we consider what we've done, we've squatted, we've pressed, we've done some uh, aerobic conditioning, and then we've done some accessory work for the upper body, and then bonus is 10 legless rope climbs four time. Um, if this takes you longer than 10 minutes, then do normal rope climbs. Okay, so a fair amount of, of volume in terms of biceps, uh, but kind of just a really lackluster day. If I was to think about this session, if I was just trying to like take this session and improve it, we could squat heavy. Sure, no problem. We could squat heavy. Um, but then doing accessory work for the upper body, I mean, it's just lacking a lot here. I think what would what I would do is if this was my programming, I would say, okay, we can squat heavy. And maybe it's a full body day. He's doing upper body and lower body, but it's, again, very haphazard in nature. There's no rest intervals, no guidelines. I don't know what's happening. And then this cardio piece. To me, this would be like a second session or something maybe we do on Tuesday. It's very different in terms of energy systems. We have different substrates that are being used. It's a different, it's a whole different form of training you're doing in the same day. Now I get it, CrossFitters need a wide array, but why not separate them? They are different things, okay? When you try to do it all in one session, there's a point of diminishing returns with that. Um, the strength work here kind of means nothing to me. I don't even know really what it is. So let's move on. Maybe this will make more sense once we see more of the programming or maybe it won't, all right? So for a strength work, we've got push press following a similar scheme that we did with our back squat. And then we're building to a 10 rep max. And then he actually gives you rest. Rest 90 seconds to two minutes between sets, which is not enough, especially for a 10 RM. Need to be resting longer, but at least there is a little bit more guidelines there. Then we go into a Metcon that is four rounds for time of a 25, 18 cal on the fan bike, and then 10 sand ball, or sandbag or D ball cleans. Okay, so I don't have a whole lot of issue with that, but then we're doing accessory work. We've got strict pull-up, band-assisted strict pull-up, four sets of 20, so 80 reps. 
And then we've got tricep extension band burnout and then reverse hyper. Don't need to be heavy with these. I would disagree. Reverse hypers are a great movement to do heavy because you get a lot of flexion and extension of lumbar spine. You get obviously some tractioning effect to it. It's a good movement that you can go heavy and control the pendulum and get a lot of great benefits from. So yes, if someone's never done it, obviously start light, but if someone's done it and they have a high level of experience as far as doing a reverse hyper, I would say load it up. People actually make the mistake of going too light with those, but that's a whole other topic for another day. Again, this is kind of just a day that it's just very haphazard in nature. He gives some rest intervals, he gives some guidance, this conditioning piece, I don't know how hard am I going on that. Is that like all out effort? It's a couplet to me, that would mean we're, we're pushing that pretty damn hard. This accessory work, band assisted strict pull up for 80 reps. Okay, cool, right? We can do some, some band assisted strict pull up. It's essentially like a lap pull down. However, we just did 10 legless rope climbs the day before. We also did some direct biceps work. So again, I don't know how that fits into the week. There's a clear overlap between these two days. Your biceps are gonna be absolutely smoked. They don't need to be. We could, we could organize this stuff a lot better. Um, and then we've got a bonus of doing some zone two, 40 minutes of zone two on the spin bike or run. All right, so let's move on to day three. And we've got bamboo bar overhead squat, three sets of eight. And then we're doing some uh, overhead squats uh, after that. And then some squat snatch. And he does give you some rest intervals. The first two, there's no rest intervals. The squat snatch, he does rest, say, rest 90 seconds. He doesn't tell you any gu guidelines. Three sets of one, what is that? Is that 80%, 85%, 90%? Is it a max? I don't know. And then snatch from a deficit, no rest interval with that. Again, just kind of a lot of stuff packaged here. We've got a Metcon of a back rack walking lunge and a 20, 15 calorie row. It doesn't tell me how hard, it's five rounds for time. Again, another couplet. We've got accessory work of goblet curtsy lunge, bent over row, and then some front plank and suitcase carry. No rest intervals, no guidelines. And again, it just looks like a lot of stuff thrown in here. Um, you know, if I was even to just to think about these first three days and not look at any more in this program, I would say, we have clear pieces in each of these days, and I'm guessing that the rest of this week, as I continue to move on here, we'll have kind of the same thing. Um, this day is actually an easy, this looks like an active recovery day, which thank God, because I'm, you know, I would say actually I'm not hurting from this program. This is a program that isn't excessive in volume. It's not excessive in terms of what we're asking someone to do, but it's all over the place. There's not a lot of detail. So I don't really know what's being asked of me. And then we go back to what we just did. Um, so I actually like this. I like that he repeats some of the strength work from the following week. Um, assisted strict chest to bar pull up. You know, we did that with the bands. Um, and I, again, I like that he's repeating some of this stuff, but the accessory work is all over the place. There's no guidelines. So, uh, you know, you guys have kind of an idea of what we're looking at here. We're looking at a program that's just rife with mistakes. There is things here that just go against the fundamentals. There are things here that if, even if you want to be the best at CrossFit, this is not the way to do it. However, I will say that this is definitely not the worst program. It is just, again, very disorganized um, to say the least. So what I would do, if we are just like, Thinking back, so think back to that day one. Um, we had a back squat, a front squat, no guidelines. So what I would tell people to do is, if you want a back squat and a front squat on the same day, fine. Let's have some clear guidelines as to what we're doing now. If we're doing three sets of six with our back squat, we're building in weight, and then maybe we're transitioning to our front squat for three sets of six, or you could keep it in the lower rep scheme. If you wanna go for a three to four to five RM, you certainly could. Another thing you could do is you could do some speed work with that, some dynamic effort training, but be concise. If you want someone to build heavy, two to three, even up to four minutes rest if you're going for true max. If you want something to do speed, have them rest anywhere from 60 to 90, even up to two minutes rest. I know kind of a sliding scale with speed work. Speed work is very dependent on the end user. Um, I've gone in the years where I've gone lower with dynamic effort, something like a speed box squat, 45, 60 seconds rest. Over time, I've actually inched that up because I see that people um, get a little bit more bang for the buck when they're able to recover more. Now, we're using submaximal loads and we're working on bar velocity, so obviously two different things than working heavy, but we are essentially, we're doing very similar things in terms of the physiology. So what we wanna consider here is that we can certainly squat this day. If you wanna do full body day, you certainly could. This accessory work is just kind of garbage. It's not done well. There's a lot of low hanging fruit here. We don't need to do this legless rope climbs, and if you wanted to do them, I would do them earlier on in the day. So here's an, here's an idea for this day, just so we have a little bit of frame of reference of what we could do to make things better. So we squat heavy, the start. 
Okay, that's number one. Number two, we do our accessory work. Maybe we do an EMOM that has legless rope climbs in it. Maybe it has some pressing in it. And then of course you could include something like a hinge pattern, like a, a kettlebell swing, a kettlebell snatch. Okay, so three things we do in an EMOM. We do, let's say 16 minutes, minute one, we do our uh, legless rope climbs. Minute two, we do um, another accessory movement if we want to, maybe a cyclical piece you could certainly mix into there. Um, you know, again, you could structure that in a number of ways where you have an EMOM that's dedicated to kind of a combination of cyclical accessory and accessory could very well be your legless rope climb. And then we could certainly end the day with some additional accessory work, maybe some of those reverse hypers, maybe some direct uh, abdominal work, and that's it. And this cardio session would be at the end, and I would tell people do this three to four hours later, or we do it on Tuesday, we do it on an alternate day. Now I know we're getting kind of like, well, we're basically rewriting the program, but there's not a whole lot of organization here. So I would have very clear parameters. Squat heavy, rest three to four minutes. We do an EMOM, that's built, that's essentially kind of like just more work capacity where we're building in recovery, but it's incomplete recovery in the sense that people are going to get improvements in local muscular endurance. Um, they're certainly gonna get um, you know, some things that they might be needing in terms of just improving uh, limiting factors. So there's a lot of ways you could skin the cat with that, but that's a, a really interesting way to do it for CrossFitters because they're very much used to using time domain. They're very much used to kind of doing these things in a way that's a little bit different than just traditional strength and conditioning world. So that is something I would potentially use there, but I think that we're, we're neglecting a lot with this program. And just at first glance, I would say that we've got no upper back work, only horizontal pulling. There is no direct glute work in this program. Unless, you know, the reverse hyper certainly can be considered direct glute work, but low hanging fruit is posterior chain, guys. Upper back complex, glute, glute complex, glute ham raise, another phenomenal exercise. Sleds, another phenomenal exercise. Loaded carries, another phenomenal exercise for the CrossFit or even former CrossFit athlete. So overall, there are better options. You guys probably just saw, we did Marcus Philly's program. His program is substantially better than this one. I actually really like his program where it covers all your bases. It's organized, lots of details. This is just a program that, again, not the worst, but it's just a lot of, of just disorganization, not a lot of details. And again, it could be substantially better if we're thinking about those things I just mentioned. So this program is rejected and I'll see you guys on the next review. Best program available on the internet today. I think it's very difficult to find a trainer like Jason. That Since joining Everyday Heroes, I feel like I've stopped working out and actually started training.